so our next reaction is addition of hydrogen cyanide so what is our next reaction addition of hydrogen cyanide here your aldehydes and the ketones react with the hydrogen cyanide resulting in the formation of cyanohydrins so what is the resulting product cyanohydrins okay so aldehydes and ketones reacts with hydrogen cyanide resulting in the formation of cyanohydrin this reaction occurs slowly when there is a presence of pure hydrogen cyanide so we need to catalyze the reaction by means of a base and the generator cyanide ion is very nucleophile it is a stronger nucleophile so this will be added easily to the carbonyl carbon of aldehyde and ketone resulting in the formation of cyanohydrins so both aldehyde and ketone react with hydrogen cyanide to give you cyanohydrins but if cyanohydrin is pure the reaction is slow so we need to add a base catalyst when you add a base catalyst the cyanide group being a potent nucleophile will be added to the carbonyl carbon of aldehyde and ketone resulting in the generation of cyanohydrin so these cyanohydrins are very useful as synthetic intermediates so they can be used as a very good synthetic intermediates now let me write the reaction now this is my carbonyl carbon of aldehyde and ketone to this i am going to add your cyanohydrin before that since the cyanohydrin is pure i need to treat it with a base as a result i will be getting a potent cyanide nucleophile plus water this potent cyanide will attack the carbonyl carbon of aldehyde and ketone resulting in the formation of an intermediate so the reaction will be c double bond o become c single bond minus and your cyanide will go and attack to the carbonyl atom now this is called as a tetrahedral intermediate so what is this this is a tetrahedral intermediate this tetrahedral intermediate will be converted to what is the product cyanohydrin this will be converted to cyanohydrin which is a product okay so let me highlight the reaction when you add hydrogen cyanide to aldehydes or ketones you will be getting cyanohydrins which will be used as synthetic intermediates for this reaction you need a catalyst which is nothing but a base as a result you will be getting a potent nucleophile cyanohydrin group which goes and attacks to carbonyl carbon of aldehyde and ketone resulting in the formation of cyanohydrins now this is your aldehyde or keto groups carbonyl carbon to which i am adding hydrogen cyanide so what happens here before that i need to treat hydrogen cyanide with a base so i got a nucleophilic cyanide group plus water molecule this cyanide group has attacked the carbonyl carbon of aldehyde and ketone so i have got a tetrahedral intermediate which is then converted to cyanohydrins which are used as potent synthetic intermediates now second reaction is addition of sodium hydrogen sulfide addition of sodium hydrogen sulfide when sodium hydrogen sulfide is added to aldehydes or ketones you will be getting addition products so now this is the aldehyde and keto group to which i am adding sodium hydrogen sulfide so what happens here there is a proton transfer so i'll be getting the reaction like this c double bond o will becomes co 
your Na will go and bind here and your HSO2 will bind here. Now here again a proton transfer happens and you will be getting the product O SO2 Na and here you will be getting OH. Now this is your addition product otherwise I can call this as bisulfite addition compound this is called as bisulfite addition compound so when I add sodium hydrogen sulfide to aldehyde or keto group I will be getting an addition compound this is called as bisulfite addition compound now when you look into the position of equilibrium the position will be towards your right hand side for aldehyde group and it is towards your left hand side for keto group so most of the aldehyde group will prefer to form the right hand side addition product and most of the keto group will be forming your left hand side addition product due to steric reason now this hydrogen sulfide addition product is water soluble so you can convert back to any carbonyl compound when you treat it with mineral acid or alkali so these addition compounds are used for separation and purification of aldehydes so this is used for separation and purification of aldehyde why because the addition compounds which are formed are water soluble so they will be forming back the carbonyl compound when you treat it with mineral acid or alkali this is the reason why your bisulfide addition compounds are used for separation and purification of aldehydes so first step we have seen addition of hydrogen cyanide in the second step we have seen addition of sodium bisulfide so third step is addition of alcohols i am going to add addition of primary alcohol addition of alcohol now my aldehydes can react with alcohol especially your monohydric alcohol in the presence of dry hydrogen chloride gas what they yield they yield an alkoxyl alcohol intermediate alkoxyl alcohol okay this intermediate is called as hemiacetal so these intermediates are called as hemiacetals hemiacetals are nothing but alkoxyl alcohol intermediate now let me write the structure of hemiacetals so i have rch i'll be getting or this uh, in order to differentiate your aldehyde and alcohol i'm just adding a dash to alcoholic group so i will be getting a product which is nothing but alkoxyl alcohol intermediate which is popularly called as hemiacetal now these hemiacetal will react with one more molecule of monohydric alcohol in the presence of a proton they will be giving rise to a compound called acetal or dialkoxyl compound so you got acetal or dialkoxyl compound now the structure will be rch this is o r dash this is also o r dash so this is di alkoxy compound which is otherwise called as acetal so when i add a monohydric alcohol to aldehyde group in the presence of dihydrogen dry in the presence of dry hydrogen chloride gas i will be getting alkoxyl alcohol intermediate which is called as hemiacetal which further reacts with one more molecule of alcohol to give rise to dialkoxyl compound which is nothing but acetal group now this is the reaction with aldehyde now what happens for the reaction with the ketone your ketones that is you have to alkyl group for ketone 
your ketones will be reacting with ethylene glycol that is CH2OH, CH2OH. So they will be reacting with ethylene glycol in the presence of dry HCl gas. They will be forming a cyclic products called ethylene glycol ketals. So the product formed by ketones is called as ethylene glycol ketals. Now the product will be take the product I mean take the reactant ketone R C O O one more R here and attach your CH2 O group of ethylene glycol. So I will be getting a cyclic product called ethylene glycol ketals with the liberation of water molecule. So what is the role of your dry hydrogen chloride? The dry hydrogen chloride will be protonating the oxygen of carbonyl compounds. So it increases the electrophilicity of carbonyl carbon. As a result there is a nucleophilic attack of ethylene glycol. So these acetals and the ketals are hydrolyzed with the mineral acid to yield the corresponding aldehyde and ketones respectively. So when I add mineral acid to aldehyde, I will be getting hemiacetyl which further reacts with one more alcohol group to give you acetyl. Similarly, ketones reacts with ethylene glycol in similar condition that is in the presence of dry HCl which protonates the oxygen of carbonyl carbon. As a result, they promote the nucleophilic attack of ethylene glycol resulting in the formation of ketals. So these acetals and ketals can be hydrolyzed with acid to give you corresponding aldehydes and ketones respectively. So now the last addition will be addition of ammonia and its derivative. So we have seen the first addition as addition of hydrogen cyanide, second addition as addition of sodium hydrogen sulphide, third addition as addition of alcohol group, fourth addition as addition of ammonia and its derivatives. As we all know that ammonia's nitrogen will be acting like a potent nucleophile. When I say ammonia and its derivatives, then it includes hydrazine NH2Z. So these ammonia and hydrazine will be added to the carbonyl group of aldehydes and ketones. So what happens to the reaction we are going to see. So ammonia and its derivatives will go and bind to the carbonyl carbon of aldehydes and ketones. This reaction is a reversible reaction and this will be catalyzed by an acid. So the equilibrium will be favoring the product formation due to the dehydration of the intermediate. Now let us see the reaction. I have the carbonyl group which belongs to both aldehyde and ketone to which I am adding ammonia derivatives that is hydrazine. So this is a reversible reaction. So I will be getting a product like this OH. NHZ this is catalyzed this reaction is a reversible reaction this is catalyzed by an acid now the equilibrium will be favoring the reaction because there is a rapid hydrolysis of this intermediate resulting in the formation of resulting in the formation of hydrazone so there is a liberation of water so this is nothing but addition of ammonia and its products. So we have seen some of the chemical reactions which involved aldehydes as well as ketones.